Today we're gonna to take a look at the Nix package manager, which is the best package manager for Linux systems and even for Mac OS. So it can be a replacement for Homebrew and I think you can use it on some BSD systems as well. And this is really the main thing that makes the Nix package manager so cool to me because I use different Linux distributions on different machines and these distributions, sometimes they have different package managers. Debian derivatives, for example, use apt, Arch uses Pacman and so on. So if I wanted a script or if you wanted a script to automate the deployment process of these different machines, whether you're deploying it from a minimal Debian base or a minimal Arch base, you can just first install the Nix package manager and then everything else is going to be the same on those systems because it gives you reproducible builds, reproducible packages. If a package works on one machine, it's going to work on another. So this is obviously a huge win if you're a power user that's running different Linux machines for different purposes, but it's also really useful for noobs who might be distro hopping, you know, they haven't realized that they can just change their desktop environment on any distro yet. So maybe they're hopping, but then they get tripped up by different package managers and the different syntax that they have. Well, now you just have to learn Nix OS and then it doesn't matter what distro you go to because this package manager will be available on all of them. Or this is also useful for the people that can't find the packages that they want to install in their distro's repository. This is actually a really common thing that makes a lot of people not want to use Linux. But now they can just install Nix and then they can get access to the 80,000 packages or over 80,000 packages that are in their repo. So you're gonna have access to things like LibreWolf, NVTOP, Exodus, and Steam. These are a lot of packages that can sometimes be really difficult to install on your system, or at least you can't install them from your regular repos. And speaking of Steam, there's also a lot of different emulators that are available in the Nix 22.11 channel. Uh, and of course, newer versions are gonna be available in the unstable channel. So yeah, this is also gonna be great for the gamers because a lot of these emulators might be kind of difficult for you to have to set it up and configure it yourself. Uh, so once you've got this down, it's very easy to reproduce all of these packages, to reinstall all of these packages onto a different system. So why don't I get into installing Nix and prove to you guys just how great it is. So installation can be done by simply copying this one liner here, and then we can go ahead and paste that over into our terminal. Now, I guess it's worth mentioning that automatically running random scripts that you download from the internet is not a safe practice. So if you're afraid of getting hacked, what you really should do, or if you don't trust any of these sources, is download this script first, like just download it with curl, the install.sh, and then inspect it with your favorite text editor. Make sure nothing crazy is going on in there. Make sure it's not going to install any malware, and then you can go ahead and install it. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and run this anyway because I like to live dangerously, and the small chance that this will wrap my system will make things interesting. Uh, so when we run this, it's gonna give us a brief overview about everything it's gonna do, check if Nix is installed already, and it's gonna create some users and groups. So we'll hit Y on this, and then it gives us a little bit more verbose explanation as far as all the different files it'll create. Go ahead and hit Y, hit Y for it to use sudo, and then it's ready to continue, so we'll let it run and do its thing. And it doesn't take very long for it to run either. I've heard that it's a lot faster than Bootstrap or uh, than Homebrew on macOS, and I think it's also faster than the AUR uh, from the last time I remember setting that up. And uh, let's see, yeah, so it's all done and it tells us that it won't work in an active shell. So we'll just go ahead and launch a new one there or you can refresh this shell here. 
And another thing that I recommend doing after you install Nix is to edit its configuration file inside of .config Nix, and the file is nix.conf, and you can just create it if the file doesn't exist for whatever reason. But put this inside of it, experimental features equals Nix command and flakes. So this is going to let you run your Nix commands a little bit less verbosely without having to do double hyphen and just these long commands for everything. And Flakes is going to let you actually search for packages uh, on your NixOS terminal. So once you've got that, uh, we can now actually start using NixOS. So why don't we search for a package? Nix, search, Nix, PKGS, and then just the name of your package. So I'll do LibreWolf here. I think I'm spelling it right there. And yeah, it's just gonna go ahead and search for LibreWolf so you can see the uh, different results here. But like I said, I prefer to just use the, um, just use this search. I think it just looks nicer. At least it's better as long as you have a good internet connection. So yeah, we can put LibreWolf into here and there you go, it's the same idea. So when we click on this, we actually, get instructions for how to install it. So this is the instructions for Nix shell, but we actually want the Nix ENV instructions. And this would be how we would do it if we're on Nix OS, and this is how we would do it on a non Nix OS, since really I'm just interested in the package manager, not actually distro hopping to Nix OS. So let's go ahead and run it. And so it's installing LibreWolf 109, and you'll see how quickly it installs this. I think it also tends to install packages faster than when you're installing them from the AUR. All right, so it's done, and I should be able to just run LibreWolf like this, and hey, look at that. We've got it, you guys. So yeah, LibreWolf, this awesome browser that's basically just like hardened Firefox, but with, um, you know, with a uh, ad blocker already pre-installed. So there you go, right? It's got probably some of the best defaults of any browser I've used. But despite LibreWolf being such an awesome browser, it's almost never available in the software repos of popular Linux distributions, even on Arch Linux, where having to install it from the Arch user repository, okay? You have to go to the AUR to get software like LibreWolf. And speaking of the AUR, you know, this is really the reason, the Arch user repository is the reason that a lot of people, myself included, are using Arch Linux. Like for me, Arch is just a pretty generic Linux distro. It I don't even run a bleeding edge kernel in my system on my Arch box because, well, I like to have stability. Uh, and of course it's using system D. So there's really not a whole lot of difference between my Arch Linux configuration and Debian or stable Debian, but I've got access to the AUR. So the ease of installing that niche software that's never found in the main repos like LibreWolf, uh, it just makes, you know, the AUR makes it worth it because I don't have to get into snaps or flat packs or any of those other things that might bloat up your system, uh, which a lot of other distros are typically offering for installing this kind of software. But now that capability is available on every Linux distro as well as Mac OS. And I believe FreeBSD as well can use the Nix package manager. And the amount of software that's in here is actually very comparable to the AUR. Like we see, it says that there's 80,000 packages that are available, or there's more than 80,000 packages available in Nix OS. And if we go to the AUR and I think it's packages, yeah, it tells us right here that there are 87,432 packages in the AUR as of today. Uh, so yeah, all of those packages, or at least all the important ones, they're gonna be available inside of NixOS, like, or inside of the Nix package manager. Like these ones here, I think these first five uh, are all just related to Arch. Like yeah, they're AUR helpers and they're like 
Pac-Man GUIs. Pac-Man is the package manager for Arch Linux. But if we take a look at Prism Launcher, for example, so this is a Minecraft launcher uh, and right now this is sorted by popularity, right? So these are the most popular packages in the AUR. And we've got Prism Launcher in there. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, why don't we do Spotify? Okay, so this is a very normie package, right? Normies love Spotify and they can get it through the next package manager. Uh, let's do Brave too. We all like Brave. It might not be Brave Bin though. It's probably just gonna be like, yeah, let's try just regular Brave. Yeah, look at that. Brave is in there and is there a newer one on the Unstable channel? No, they've got the latest one on the Stable channel. Let's see, let's do one more, one more good one. Why don't we do Zoom, okay? So this is like the most popular um, video conferencing software right now. And sure enough, Zoom US, it's available on Nix. Now I know that these are all horrible spyware programs. You would probably never want them on your system, but there's a lot of people that are using these different programs. And since it's traditionally been very difficult to install a lot of these uh, different pieces of software on Linux, Nix is going to help bridge that gap for those users. That might have actually made a lot of people hesitant to switch from Mac or Windows to Linux because it was just too hard for them to set up their heckin' Spotify, their Zoom, and their Minecraft. And if you did have to install Zoom or maybe Skype for some reason, let's see if they have Skype on here. You might need this to talk to your grandma. Yeah, there you go, right? So Skype for Linux, so you can talk to the family. You can put that on your system if you absolutely have to, and this is probably gonna be the, like as far as harm reduction goes without introducing a lot of non-free software to your system, that's probably the best way to do it without having to get into snaps, flat packs, and add a whole lot of bloat. And even if you did end up installing a package that causes some issues on your system, fixing that with Nix is very easy because Nix makes snapshots before you install a package. So if I were to do Nix env list generations, uh, well, right now I just have the one since I've only installed LibreWolf, but if I've had multiple packages that I installed, there would be different generations here, and then I could just roll back. Like here, I'll go ahead and install another piece of software, just D menu. So that installed it pretty quickly. And now you see I've got these different generations. So if I wanted to roll this back, let's say, I mean, this would never happen, but let's say D menu <laughs> broke my system for some reason. Uh, I could just do Nix ENV rollback. And now it's gonna put me back on uh, version one. And so if I run this command again, you'll see that my current version changes from two to one. So very, very easy to fix your system if you ever break it. And this is why I think Nix is the superior package manager. So definitely try it out on your Linux system or on your Mac system today. Like and comment, tag the algorithm, follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.